Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. Uh, we're going to continue our study on Judges 6, 7, and 8. Before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we are very grateful for the time that we have each morning. And this morning we ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit can speak to us once again, that we can be corrected and reproved, and uh, that we can see our need of you, and that we can come to you for cleansing and healing. We ask, Lord, that you can bless this movement, help us to understand the truths that you have unfolded over the past 30 plus years. And uh, we're thankful, Lord, that we are here at this time in Earth's history. We just pray, Lord, that we can endure the trials that face us and that you can give us strength for the trials of each day. Give us light for our, our feet and strength for the journey. May your Holy Spirit speak to us as we open your word together, is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Just a few of us here this morning. Not everyone's here, but uh, welcome to the study. And uh, uh, we got a lot of smoke in the air here because of fires. So I, I put the camera out the window. You won't see it on the video here, but... Um, if you see on the other camera, uh, you can see it, the smoke is mostly close to the ground. Yesterday it was up high, so um, you can't really see it well on this camera, uh, but uh, you would see a lot further in the distance than you can see there because the smoke is obscuring uh, the trees in the distance. But you can see the sky's fairly blue. So we got the sunshine, which we didn't really have yesterday. Anyway, um, so you can keep people in, in your prayers around here. With all the smoke and the fires. Now, um, at the end of the day yesterday, we had uh, talked about uh, Jeff's presentation. Uh, the last presentations that he had done. This is on July 11th. And he did two presentations actually that day, number 50 and 51 of Daniel's last vision. And I, I was wanting to share it on my screen. Wasn't really able to. So um, <clears throat> now I do have the text. Now the main thing that he, he talks about there is in the first one, He's going to talk about uh, holding fast uh, the confidence of our faith till the end. Um, and that's going to be from Hebrews, the book of Hebrews that he's going to be preaching. So it's Hebrews chapter 3, um, starts at verse 14, um, or actually starts at verse 3, verse 6, I think, and then he does... Um, We'd read some in Hebrews chapter 10 as well, holding the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Um, now, there's a number of interesting uh, numbers that are mentioned. So we know that it's July 10th and 11th. That um, uh, So he says it's 10 after 11 here. So I thought that was interesting. He has this 10-11. Then he's going to have a meeting in the afternoon, he says, at 2.30. And, and then he talks about the scripture reading in verse 23, verse uh, in chapter 10. So you get a 230, 23 times 10 is 230. And then Hebrews 3, verse 6. So you get a 36 or a 63. So it's just when he's talking here, there's some symbols in these numbers of his presentation. Um, now, he starts out, uh, the first line that I have, um, it, it, it cuts into the middle of his prayer, or actually near the end of his prayer. The video doesn't start at the beginning of his prayer. So it starts out, the last Sabbath before a complete change takes place in this movement, in this message. 
And then he says, please bless us now as we open your word in Jesus' name, right? So, so that's it's just basically the last sentence of his prayer is recorded in the video. But he talks about the last Sabbath before a complete change takes place in the movement. Now, he's also going to talk about that there's eight days. So it's obviously seven days until July 18th, but eight days until the day after. So um, what's this eight? Let's see if I can find it again. Um, yeah, so he says, uh, the post, what, how does he put that here? Post July 18th is eight days from now. That's how he words it. So that's going to be July 19th. So he's, he's looking past July 18th to July 19th. And if you look at the context then of what he's talking about, holding, holding our faith, uh, holding fast to our faith, to our profession of faith without wavering. So the idea is that we're going to face a trial and we're going to need faith. And um, so there's, he talks about the rebuilding of Jericho. He goes over some Adventist history and, and some summations of this uh, this message and why it's led to July 18th. So he here he says, um, well, let's read a bit here. So he's talking about Numbers 14. So this is Caleb and Joshua and uh, the Promised Land and the Ten Spies. He deals with this. Um, he reads, uh, take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. When we come to this crisis of July 18th, our safety is holding the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end and i'd argue that you have to have a beginning of confidence and so he's going to talk about when he first became a seventh-day adventist that he'd come straight out of the world and that um uh the difference that the thing that he noticed about adventists is people did not have a conversion story but he had a conversion and and so he says this is something that we need um, so we have to have a beginning of our confidence if we're going to hold it steadfast. We need to be converted. Um, so that's that's in the first sermon on on July 11th. And then when you get to the second one, he's going to review a little bit more about um, June 22nd. Um, about the publication of the ad and uh, and how the website is doing and how it was a miracle basically that we didn't have to pay for it and um, there's a lot of stuff here uh, he's going to mention um, uh, early writings, page seventy-four, where, which we, which is something that we studied after July eighteenth, and found that the date there, September twenty-third, eighteen fifty, uh, that is is given for that uh, a vision is actually October twenty-third, eighteen fifty. So it's the day after disappointment symbol, right? So it's obviously 1850, that's going to be six years after the disappointment, the day after, six years after Hiram Edson's uh, cornfield vision. 
So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, and he mentions that uh, passage. And then he says this. Um, it's kind of hard to read because you don't have uh, sentences. Okay, this is where Sister White is quoting from the Lord stretched forth his hand a second time. And in that day, we're saying July 18, it is that day that the um, enzyme is lifted up. And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an enzyme of the people to which the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. It wouldn't be the Gentiles It'd be the Levites, the Gentiles would be December 25th, 2021. But I notice it's chapter 11, verse 11. So what is the symbol here of 1111? So why does Jeff take note of it? First, is it a doubling? And second, is it the number of disciples that are left after the crucifixion? Okay, well, I never thought about the disciples. Um, so we know there's 11 generations to the flood and 11 generations to the Israelites going into Egypt. Right, or that is Jacob entering Egypt. He's the 22nd generation from creation. <clears throat> Um, but we have Daniel 11, 11. So 11, 11 becomes this important symbol. Um, you know, my birthday, February 6, 1963, is the 11th day of the 11th month on the biblical calendar. So it's something that I note, um, 11, 11. So it's this symbol here. Now he's saying that, you know, it's not going to be the Gentiles. It's going to be the Levites. Um on December 25th, 2021. Well, we know that didn't happen that way. So we've understood these lines a little bit differently. But Jeff is still setting us up to understand the disappointment in what he presents in these presentations. Um, and... So he talks about that we have seven days to settle into this confidence. So he's saying we need this, this confidence. That's basically the end of the first sermon. Um, and then he talks about in the second sermon, he goes back over the publication of the Time of the End magazine. Um, he talks about the last six verses of Daniel 11. So he goes back and rehearses the past. Um, he deals with uh, uh, some history, uh, Ron Spear and so forth that he goes over. Um, and, and how the, what the reaction was to 1790 uh, to 1798 and 1989, both being the time of the end and people's reaction to it at Hope International. Um, so he says here, um, and, and he's talking here about, um, okay, I thought that guy was an Adventist. I'm trying to figure, understand it. In Revelation 13, 11 talks about the beast coming up out of the earth, and that's the United States, and it rhymes in verse 11 in 1798, and that verse goes all the way till it speaks like a dragon, which is the Sunday law. It has the same identical history. In verse 11 of Revelation 13, I'm saying it is verse 40, but I'm a heretic for saying that, and he backed down off of, the, of that, a lot of crazy things that he was charging me with. He says, he was saying, you know, that's Jesuit teaching, what Pippinger is doing, the Jesuits are the ones that take the symbols and make them literal. Hmm. And he's taken the glorious land instead of uh, applying it spiritually. He's saying it's literally the United States. And once again, I said, well, I thought in Revelation 13, 11, the lamb like beast, which is a symbol, was a symbol. But we apply it literally the United States. 
So he's just talking about how people misunderstand what you mean by a symbol literally. Now, if you took a symbol literally, you would actually believe that there's going to be a beast with two horns, right? Um, you know, that uh, is going to speak like a dragon. And you took that literally. Um, so obviously that's not, to, to interpret the symbol and apply it is not taking it literally, the symbol literally. But anyway, he goes through some of this history of the different arguments that were brought against this movement. And um, let me see here. It talks about the symbolic use of numbers, the 2520 or the 126 or the 151. Uh, what he wants to show is that at 9-11, an angel comes down from heaven and the earth is lightened with his glory. And he repeats the second angel's message. Babylon is fallen, is fallen. So he's um, connecting again that 9-11 is uh, Revelation 18. Now we know in understanding these lines that when we look at the book of Judges, we see that 9-11 really is the beginning of the Sunday law. So we've come to understand that that way mark is, is the beginning of the Sunday law in our line, in our fractal line, where we're looking at the way mark of uh, the Sunday law. We can see our whole movement is about the Sunday law. And, and that begins at 9-11. So I guess technically the second angel. When the second angel arrives, that's, that's the Sunday law, right? In Ellen White's line, it's this repeat of history, Revelation 18. So we can see why 9-11 is the beginning of the Sunday law. But we know that the book of Judges is a zoom into the second angel arriving. It's a zoom into that symbol on the line that Jeff has, right? So we're zooming into the Sunday law. Our history is about the Sunday law, but this is all leading up to the Sunday law. And um, he again is gonna mention early writings, page 74, um, where it says, I've seen that the 1843 chart was directed by the hand of the Lord and it should not be altered that the figures whereas he wanted them and that his hand was over and hid a mistake in some of the figures so that none could see it and it and uh, could see it until his hand was removed. Then I saw in relation to the daily that the word sacrifice was supplied by man's wisdom and does not belong to the text and that the Lord gave a correct view of it to those who gave the judgment hour cry. Um, so, he, he goes over this, the importance of the chart, the importance of believing the correct view of the daily. And uh, so there's more. He's going to go back again about uh, October 22 and, and in paralleling it with July 18th. Um, so, of course, we know that for us, it was a disappointment, just as October 22nd, 1844, was a disappointment for the Millerites. So he's sort of prefiguring the disappointment that we're going to experience. Talks more about the Daniel 11 controversy within Adventism and talks about higher medicine's articles. And um, let's see what else. I'm almost at the end here. It's a pretty quick quick summary of, of two sermons. Um, so he talks here. He talks about the mistake. Um, okay, this is uh, rather complicated to read here. So he's talking about uh, 2019. Uh, that they made a mistake. He says that's not 
necessarily rejecting the beginning of your confidence to have made a mistake. All right. Is any is anyone else not following her logic? Um, so I'm trying to figure out what this is talking about. Who's the who? Who's the her? Okay. Would it not be Taft? Yeah, but I yeah I don't I think it could be. I think he's talking about Tess. Um. Um. Yeah, because I think he's talking about. Uh, I think he's talking about that video. Remember the video that was put out by uh, a follower of Tess. Be prior to November 9th. Anybody remember that video that Jeff refers to? Yeah, I'd, I'd have to watch this this second video to to kind of pick through what he's re really referring to. I'm not sure if somebody else here is also talking because um, I'm just looking at the, the document. So. Uh, Okay, so there, there's lots going on in these in these two presentations on July 11th. Uh, he's even going to go back and talk about uh, Walter Martin and Donald Barnhouse and uh, what happened in the 50s. Um, okay. Yeah, so just putting these in, like I have, uh, what, 52 pages, 21,054 words of the two uh, presentations, I put them into a, a document. Uh, maybe I'll edit these. Um, but anyway, so we looked at this because we have uh, in Judges, uh, we were addressing this uh, this chart here, so I'll go there. <clears throat> so it's it's Judges 7, it's the second line. So Judges 7, verse 10 to 11. So we put that as July 10th and 11th. So I do a presentation on July 10th. Jeff is gonna do two presentations on July 11th. And we're saying that that's the second angel arriving. So. The, the question is, what message arrives on July 10th? So, I mean, I just skimmed through these two presentations. So this is a message that Jeff's giving regarding the past, that we have to hold the beginning of our conf confidence steadfast unto the end. That means we have to have a confidence. It has to have a beginning if we're going to hold it steadfast. And so he reviews all this different history, things within our movement, things within Adventism. And he talks about that there's eight days until everything changes. So the day after Nashville, he, he's marking July 19th. But he says it's going to be that everything changes. So what is the message that arrives? And, and just to sort of review this, if we look at this first message. So remember, we have a period of darkness here in Judges chapter seven. We have this call and this call is gonna bring these people in, right? He's gonna bring this 32,000, but they're gonna be separated out, 22,000 of them. So there's 10,000 left. And then the 10,000 is gonna be whittled down to 300. So that's gonna be the empowerment of that first message. And so what did we say that first message was? September 7th, 2019, in our line. It's going to be formalized on November 9th and then empowered on June 21st and 22nd, 2020. 
So what was the first message in this line? Anybody remember yesterday? I had a hard time getting you guys even guessing at what the first message was. Because we can't have a line if we don't, um, you know, if we can't have a um, understanding what the message is. So we need to know what that message is. Since we're making the applications here of mm -hmm. first, second, and third angel's message, we have to have a, a good understanding of the first two before we can ever progress onto the third. Mm -hmm. So, so at this at this point, as as you're going into this with the second angel's message, from what Elder Jeff was presenting prior to July 18th, this, <clears throat> this has been a situation, just like with the Millerites before, that they needed to learn <clears throat> what it was going to mean to give glory to God. And the messages that, that we were having to examine prior to this, that changed the movement was the fact that we were going to be repeating Millerite's history in almost in pretty much every detail. Right. Okay. So how does how does that help us decide what this first and second messages are in this line of the judges beginning at September 7th and then July 10th to 11th? the second message arriving in 2020. So you got, because we address the period of darkness. Well, the it, it's like with the empowerment, what, what he was addressing at that point was when the message went out on Nashville, they had to come up with $14,000 to place the ad, and there was only one paper that would even agree to the ad. Yeah. And that, it wasn't long after that that all of the money was returned. Mm -hmm. So in this, the fact that they were showing through that FFA was showing that they had the desire to give the glory to God, that they feared or loved God so much that no matter what the embarrassment was, that they were going to promote this message. And then in giving glory to God, to Elder Jeff, he recognized that the end of FFA was going to occur no matter what happened on July 18th. Yes. So so what he's marking there is the change. There's right. going to be this change that happens to this movement July 19th. Right. And um, and so he talks about holding the conf the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Right. So that's the second message, I think. Right. That that arrives on that. So we can see the formalization of that is July 18th. We could maybe argue that it's July 19th, but we have it as July 18th because of Judges 718. But it was interesting to me when I reviewed part of that as I worked yesterday that 
he also was very direct and very clear in noting December 25th of 2021. Yes. Yeah. So he's looking to that, to the end of the 777 days. Exactly. Right. Which we put as the, the, the empowerment, right? So we have this uh, formalization we're saying is July 18th. Right. So right. we put, copy this here. I guess I could copy both of them. So you get the formalization here, and then you're going to have um, the second angel empowered. Oops, I always do that. There. So the symbols that we, that we have to look at what the symbols are um, that would would place that as well, and then we have. Uh, third angel arriving here we haven't got there yet yeah but it's in it's intriguing the way you just did that since you have since we've gotten december 26th as the empowerment on the line of gideon and then we're saying december 25th is the empowerment on our line um well i mean this yeah i, I see what you're saying how do we the, reconcile that well because we have to look at what is being addressed in each line so so this is so this is when we create a line we have to understand what the period of darkness is and then from that we recognize what the message is and how it's formalized and empowered and so uh what we have here these fleeces are these two messages march 7th 2021 is when we began uh examining the foundation and december 26 2021 is when we began this study understanding the lines we're saying that those are fleece those are the fleece that's what's being represented there okay and so the reason why is because we're, we're understanding what this message is based upon the symbols that are, and the story that is in Judges chapter six. So this is about um, uh, basically it's it's the call of Gideon that, or Gideon being called to give this message, right? So in in him being called to give this message, which is Gideon is this message, but it's representing his role. Um, And because we could go through this again and look at each of the symbols there, but we have symbols for November 9th. We have symbols for that places. And a lot of it had to do with the verses themselves. So Judges 6, 21 and 22 is June 21, 22. Judges 6, 27 is June 27, right? And then in Judges 6, 34, that is going to be, um, because that, that, uh, verse is also used here that's when the trumpet is given right so the trumpet being given on july 18th that has to do with the trumpets right the the, the seventh trumpet with the third woe the symbolism of the trumpets august 11th 1840 etc so we put the trumpet there july 18th and then we have these fleece right the two the two fleece um representing an examination or a testing of the message, right? God's leading in providence. And then we get to Judges uh, 7, and we're just saying Judges 7 is relating to January 11th, first, uh, January 11 to 12, right? So, I mean, maybe there's other things that we could do with these lines, but that's how we had done it. So that's why December 26th. When we look at this next line, then, it's not addressing the call of Gideon, you know, to, to become this message. It's addressing something else. It's, it's the call of Gideon to this movement. It's the people that come into this movement or the people in this movement that are called to the July 18, 2020 prediction. So when we looked at it, 
yesterday, we can see that there's this September 7th, Jeff wakes up, basically says Parminder's in apostasy, Parminder and Tess are teaching a false message. It undermines the message that we's, we've been given. It's the rebellion at Baal Peor, right? <clears throat> and so that's going to be the arrival of the first message. And then we have this formalization, Judges 7-3, and we're saying that that's all those people that came after from September 9th to November 9th, those 63 days, we have all these people come to the movement, but many of them don't want to join in the July 18th proclamation, right? That is, they're, they're struggling with this with Jeff, right? We don't want to set time. We don't want to do the Nashville uh, ad. We don't want to warn people because we don't believe in time setting. But that's going to be empowered when it's actually published and the world hears of the July 18, 2020 prediction. So there's 10,000 that are separated out. Only the 300 join in that proclamation. Right. So there's people in the movement who accept that we should warn Met Nashville and people who believe we shouldn't. And then... When we get to this message arriving, it's going to be Jeff talking about what happened with this empowerment, right? Saying that if we've had the beginning of our confidence, we, we must hold it steadfast unto the end. Now, he's talking about what's going to happen after July 18th. So that's the second message then has to do with our disappointment in a, in a rejection of this message, right? Or in the failure of this message, and many are going to reject that. So, so we're going to have this whole history. When we get to then December 25th, 2021, the end of that, so 525 days after July 18, um, that message is empowered. Now it's empowered primarily by Stephen recognizing the 777 years. But here it's an empowerment of this particular message. So that message must be about the failure of July 18. Because basically, Jeff's talking about that, that we're going to have to have our, hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. He's pointing to after July 18th. And then when we get to December 25th, then that means... Either we have accepted the empowerment of this message or not, right? So the message is empowered, but not everyone is going to accept it. So we, I'm not saying that necessarily these lines are correct. I mean, maybe the January 11th, uh, 2023 um, is, is not part of it, but... Uh, the way that I look at it is also on December 25th at that empowerment, we have this message from Colin and Colin, his prediction leads to January 11th to 12th, 2023. So that's why I put that as the third angel arriving. So then specifically, we still, we still are fuzzy about what that first message is. We still seem to not um, So what is the first message that arrives then specifically where Gideon makes this call? So is it just because we need to know the darkness too? Can somebody define this for us? So I said, you know, the movement was working towards an organization prior to September 7th, right? We had the conflict with Parminder. 
are we still dealing <clears throat> prior to September 7th? Aren't we still dealing with the issues of many of the teachings of Parminder and Tess? Yeah, we are. But but when in this line, we're not addressing that. Right? You understand what I'm saying? So there is a darkness, but that darkness contains lots of things because there are other lines that address that darkness, Parminder's teachings. Now, on September 7th, we have this call. So this call is about... July 18th, even though on September 7th, Jeff doesn't talk about July 18th, at least I don't think he did. He's going to go back over um, the Time of the End magazine. So he's going to go back over this foundation. But connected with September 7th is this opening up of the door to July 18th because of what happened on August 29th with the tribunal with you know Parminder and Tapo and Tess and the others wanting Stephen Odilio and John Mark to recant of their belief in July 18th. That's part of what happens with September 7th, even though it doesn't happen on that date. But because Jeff wakes up, he's going to make this call. And this call we're going to see is going to be about July 18th. So that's what's being addressed. So it would be Parminder's rejection of July 18th, you could say, that is the darkness. Because we had July 18th in the movement. Jeff had accepted it in 2018. But then it's pushed aside. So the darkness is this darkness regarding July 18th. Is that um, so? There was this organization. What What's that? So I'm considering what you're saying. Okay. So uh, yesterday I talked about the fact that there's this this organizational structure that Parminder is trying to bring about. Now it's papal. We know that. Now when Jeff wakes up and then presents this message 329 days after the October 13th confirmation. So we're gonna have 391 and a half days to November 9th. Um, that this message has to be about July 18th or about looking back at the past of our prophecies, which then we're going to see lead us to July 18th. So once Parminder's out of the way, we can examine this message. Now, many people don't want time setting at all. They, they didn't like Parminder. So when Jeff wakes up, people who had been sort of pushed out of the movement or themselves not wanting to have anything to do with it because of November 9th proclamation, they start coming in in that that period from September 11th to November 9th saying we're behind you Jeff but we don't want to have anything to do with any more time setting go back to what you've been teaching in the past and we'll be happy we will support your movement that's that's and and you can see for Jeff um you know he had made this mistake with Parminder right his is his error in judgment and trusting Parminder. And Parminder had deceived him as well. You know, Jeff could have followed people's advice. He could have said, look, all of this time setting came from Parminder and we just need to set it aside. We need to forget about that history. Now, why did Jeff not do that? Why does he accept July 18?
I mean, I already, in a sense, had been discredited, you know, so Parminder had been discredited. And, and Jeff could have said, well, look, you know, I made a mistake with Parminder, basically. And he did say that he was unfit to lead the movement, which, of course, meant that he was now fit to lead the movement. Um, but he seen that he had made all of these mistakes before. And this is he trusts the wrong people. So now he's going to take up July 18th again. Why? Why does Jeff do this? And, and he even says that Parminder and Tess are going to be wrong about November 9th. Why does he hold to that date? Why doesn't he just get rid of everything that Parminder brought into the movement and just say, you know, this time setting was a mistake. We shouldn't have been doing this. Because there was evidence of time or movement. Okay. So the thing is, there were some, there was truth mixed with error, right? And we know why that is. Error, if it's not mixed with truth, has no power in it, nothing to convince it. And uh, and also, Satan likes to mix truth with error, or really error with truth, so that the truth will be rejected in the end. So the best thing that Satan could do is he could say, okay, let's do some bring time setting into this movement, and we're going to have it destroy the movement because the movement's going to fail in its predictions. And so, you know, everything's working out to Satan's plans, right? I'm going to mix truth with error. But Jeff understands truth. And, and the reason why he accepted what Parminder had said is there was truth there. That is the movement had been leading in this, going in this direction for a long time. And so there was, there was reasons why that everything in this movement, everything that this movement had understood in the past was leading us to July 18, 2020. So Jeff was aware of Samuel Snow's letters and how they fit with July 18, 2020. He understood the arguments for July 18, 2020. He had studied it and he knew it was, to, it was truth. And so Jeff isn't going to be dissuaded by these types of, of appeals. He understands that, that we're coming to a crisis, that God has been leading this movement, that in spite of the fact that Jeff made a mistake in trusting Parminder, that we were, le we were heading in a direction that was under God's leading. So when we get to November 9th, 2019, Jeff is discerning enough to know Tess's predictions are not going to happen, but that this is prophetic still, that this separation that is happening in this movement is part of prophecy. And if you think about it, Jeff has a choice. He can say, he can do like the December 6, 2020 declaration did. He could say, God was not leading us. And so all of these things that have happened are meaningless. Right? Or he could say, God was leading us. And even in the mistakes that we make, we see God's hand. Because you could do the same thing with Millerite history. You could do the same things with the disciples, right? You can look at the mistakes that are made. You can see these failures and you can just say, well, I didn't expect this to happen. So we, God mustn't be leading us. But Jeff knows enough of past history to recognize that all of these things that have happened are God's leading. Even the things that appear, appear to be mistakes are actually there, those lay footsteps 
in the path towards the celestial city. They're footsteps that have happened before. We're walking along and following footprints in the snow. And he knows that the, where those footprints lead. So, you know, Stephen Odilio and myself there on November 9th at the School of the Prophets. And, and Stephen, and how long did you present before I got there, Stephen? Was it like a few weeks, a month, or what? Do you remember? Yeah, I think we got there around, maybe around the 28th, the 20th of October. Okay, yeah, so, so you were there for a few weeks. And then you stayed a few weeks after, right? Well, maybe not like a, maybe one week. One week only? Okay. So you were there, you know, roughly a month. Yes. Yeah. So a lot of opportunity to present things. Um, and it was very solid, right? So one of the things that we could see is that everything that we had been given was really solid. So the movement after November 9th has this message. It's July 18th. It's formalized. And then we're going to empower it when it's published. But we see tied to this is this call, this call to these people. These people come. Some of them fall away, right? They go back home. You have 10,000. But when you get to 10,000, you have, this is Gideon's 300. Right? This is the empowerment of this message, this first message there. But it's tied to this number of people. So then when we get to the second message, Jeff's referring back to this past history, particularly to the publication of this warning to Nashville, and then looking ahead to after July 18. And after July 18, we have to hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. We have seven days to get our confidence established. Because when we get to July 18th, if we don't have our confidence established, whatever's going to happen there, we're not going to be able to continue on. And now there are other lines that's going to give more detail here. But in this line, in this broad line, this these brushstrokes here, we can see that uh, September or December 25th, 2021, is the empowerment of this message because we come to the end of that 777 structure and we have this message that is, as being empowered. So we now understand clearly, we should understand clearly the disappointment because what we're studying through that time is to understand this, the examining the foundation. So when we get to December 25th, I believe it's confirmed there that we were correct that the understanding we had after July 18th of why we were disappointed is well established. But not all in the movement are going to accept that. So we have this empowerment to this message, but we have Colin presenting his study. And his study is also really establishing this message. But it's not understood correctly by people in the movement. And because of the conflict that happens, you know, we don't study it properly. So we get to the end of that and we have this third angel's message arriving. But that has to be arriving. This is all about this darkness. So if we understand what this darkness is, that it's, it's what, right? So we've talked about it, but we still haven't really established it. So we know it's a rejection of July 18th, right? Because that's what happens before September 7th. July 18th is rejected. But what is that that is rejected? 
prior to September 7th? What is that darkness? What is the rejection of July 18th as darkness? What is it? How would we characterize it? Because it's not just about July 18th, the date. It's not just that July 18th as a date is rejected. What is being rejected? I would connect it to July, um, to the midnight cry, the light that was set up behind it. You have all the symbolism of the midnight cry with July 18th. Okay. Would it be, would it be time set? No. Okay, now Rand says the symbolic use of numbers. And, and, and so we have Stephen, what Stephen said is, so obviously the symbolic use of numbers relates to time, right? Samuel Snow's letters relate to time. So when July 18th was rejected, if we think about how it was rejected, first it's going to be Tess who rejects it. So Jeff accepts it. He goes to Brazil. Tess is there. She rejects all of this stuff. She rejects the, the 391 and a half days pointing to November 9th. She rejects basically anything that I had presented. And Jeff comes back really dejected from Brazil. Right? He won't even look me in the eye when he gets back. So, so I know something happened. And, and, and he does say, you know, we, we can't, uh, you know, he talks about it, that we can't support July 18th, that uh, Parminder and Tess are saying that uh, we can't support this. And he, he's very dejected about it, right, because he saw it as tr truth. So, so what was rejected wasn't just July 18 as a date, but it's actually, Jeff could see that it's tied to all these other things. And it goes back to Adventist history, as Stephen says, the midnight cry, because the light of the midnight cry shines all, around, all along the path. And, and this movement has been following this light of the midnight cry. And, and for a short time there, we don't see the light. We stumble. Many fall off into the darkness. But on September 7th, Jeff awakens to recognize we have strayed. We need, to, we need to accept this light that was rejected by Parminder and Tess. Because he knew it was light. Jeff knew that July 18th was light. I mean, he rejoiced in that light. And, and to, be, to, to see that light rejected and that to see Jeff dejected because of that rejected light. I mean... He now knows what the truth is. When he recognizes that Parminder and Tess are in error, he now knows what the truth is. It's July 18th. So even though Def Jeff doesn't mention July 18th that I remember on the September 7th, he's going to start mentioning it as he goes through these presentations, beginning on September 7th. So he does the last presentation in Lambert Church, right? And then we get to November 9th. Now, it is interesting um, that on April 22nd of this year, Lambert Church reopened. And April 22nd is how many days after November 9th, 2019? It's 1,260 days after. Is that significant? This is a, a number or a date that the Captain Caleb script mentioned to Army of, mm -hmm. Army with Banner. Right. They were very much had emphasized that their date, 22nd, but they were connecting it to Earth Day. Right. The United Nations date. Which would make no sense because... We know that this is this time is about our our line, our history, right? It's internal. 
It's about this movement. Correct? Yes. Yeah. So when we start, you know, you can count 1260 days and you find some event there in the future, right? That's what they did. And they said, well, it must be Earth Day. Well, what does that have to do with anything? It has absolutely nothing to do with anything. Right? How does that fit into a line? Where's the line? Where's the period of darkness? Where's Earth Day away mark? You understand what I'm saying? That we can all count 1260 days. But what we find is that 1260 days later, Lambert Church reopens. And that's significant. Now, there's more to it, and I'm going to uh, do this in another study where I'm going to show you how, how this all fits together. But um, now Lambert Church reopening is, is interesting because we know there's the last sermon presented is September 7, 2019. Um, so I think it's 1323 days from when it, the last sermon was presented to when it was uh, reopened. Right. But I still think that there is significance in the movement in Arkansas. So the people who 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 uh, reopened it were people who are who were in the message. Um, some of them prior to July 18th and some of them went through July 18th. Um, so I know there's going to be different uh, opinions there regarding you know this message but i believe it is at least symbolic if not um providential in in some way in this movement moving forward so i'm in contact with one of the persons who goes there um and well a couple of people i guess so so anyway you know, we can see that that's some other line, but I'm just mentioning it here in the context of this last sermon presented. So we know that this history that we're in is, is addressing uh, this, this rejection of July 18th, which is rejection of this message. And so now we're coming back into our history, you know, 1260 days after uh, November 9th, we have this, this event that happens, and it does relate to this movement. So, so we have November 9th, we have July 18th well established, we have it empowered, then we have Jeff talking about after July 18th, that's the second angel arriving. And then we have July 18th itself. So, and, and maybe we could say after July 18th, but we're having that, that trumpet there. And then we have December 25th. So we have this message empowered. And then this leads us to uh, January 11th, 20, uh, 2023. What's that, Dwight? Nothing, my phone was giving me a message. Oh, okay. And so, so that brings us to the end of these things, right? I mean, the end of this line, chapter seven. Right. Right. Now we can look at, you know, the verses that we used, Judges 7.22, uh, the 300 blew the trumpets, and the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow throughout all the host. So this is focused upon, um, and, and, and maybe we could revive these lines, you know, we could, we could change things a little bit, but we have Judges 7.22, and I'm placing that as December 25th, 2021. But this is the 300 blowing their trumpets. So we know there that December 25th is then this empowerment, right? That's what, what's where we're taking, the blowing of these trumpets. And, and there is this message that this conflict that occurs too. 
And then we're saying Judges 7.23. So the men of Naphtali gathered themselves together out of Naphtali. Men of Israel gathered themselves together out of Naphtali and out of Asher and out of all of Manasseh and pursued after the Midianites. And Gideon sent messengers throughout all Mount Ephraim saying, come down against the Midianites, take before them the waters unto Beth Bara um, and Jordan. And then all the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together and took the waters unto Beth Bara and Jordan. And they took two princes of the Midianites, Oreb and Zeb, and they slew Oreb and Zeb upon the rock Oreb and Zeb. And they slew at the winepress of Zeb and pursued the Midian and brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon on the other side, Jordan. So we're saying that this has to do with the end of Colin's prediction. Now, yeah. refresh my memory as to why we make the application with this with Judges 7.22 on December 25th? Well, because it's an empowerment. So the blowing of the trumpets is an empowerment. That's all we're saying about that. Now, the 300 are separated out on June 21st, 2022. But it's verse 720, where they're noting the three companies blowing the trumpet. Yeah. And then on 721, and they stood every man in his place round about the camp, and all the host ran and cried and fled. So you have this symbol for midnight. Right. So is that something that, that we should be noting in this line? Yeah. So I, I, I wondered about that myself. Uh so one thing we could do is we could simply do this um, instead of just nailing it down to one verse. Right. Oops. Right. So that's going to be Judges 8, verse 20 to 21 that we mark as, whoops, what did I do? I put it in the wrong spot here. Right. I don't know why I did that. Okay, here it is. Judge 18, verse to verse 21. There we go. So we put this here. But so we're, we're then noting the formalization as being midnight? Yes, which it is in Millerite history. Should we put midnight underneath the two alpha fox trot well it's always midnight that's what it is right so that's just redundant right and then we have judges 22 as this verse so we know that and, and the reason why i put july 18 to 21 if you if we look at that history, there's going to be that first few days after July 18, in which um, uh, I write the paper after July 18, so that I address this. There's uh, I don't know if I write the paper then, but I, I make the explanations after, and then they get put into a paper later. I'm not sure the date of that. Um, but there is that first few days after. So I'm just going to say that it's going to represent those dates. Um, I'm seeing something here. Um, what did I do here? I forget. So in in twenty twenty, um, right after July eighteenth, I'm going to be addressing 
I'm actually going to be studying the Apocrypha. Um, and I'm going to write a paper called Measuring the Time, which I never did publish. Um, but that's what happens right after July 18. So I do this study, and then it's actually on July 22nd that I write the paper. Um, I, I write it over a period of a few days, um, but I start it there. Okay, so so anyway, that's why I'm putting this. This is this period of time. Then we get to Judges 7:22. Now. We have Martyr, December 25th, 2021. Now, maybe we could put some other date there. As in what? Well, you could put December 20 or December 6, 2020 there. But that's good. That's going to be the rejection of. July 18th by FFA. So this would relate, but I put December 25th because I'm including the entire movement. Because I believe when we get to December 25th, 2021, the basically most of the movement has rejected July 18th, even if they hold to the date that they've rejected basically the foundation of July 18th. And, and there's no reason for them to continue believing in July 18th. Because they don't, they don't accept it. They say they accept it, but they don't. Right. Because if you accepted it, you wouldn't be doing what you're doing. So that's why I put, put it there. But yeah, I mean, it is a period of time that from, you know, from July 18th to December 25th, we got the 525 days. So to me, that's just the period of time in which people evaluate the formalization of the message. And it's going to be empowered there. But when it's empowered, most of the movement isn't going to accept it. But they're going to have this. Now, what we had hoped, you know, in Millerite history, we have that Exeter and, you know, f fanaticism, you know, melts away like the frost or not the frost, but the dew or what maybe it's the frost in the morning sun. Right. So I don't know. So I'm just saying this is what we did with these lines. We could change these if people have some good arguments for to look at these another way. But what I'm looking at is we have a period of darkness that has to do with July 18. That is, it's been rejected. And in the first message, the movement accepts it, right? We come back, we revive this July 18th prediction. But then Jeff prepares us for the rejection of it again after its failure. And so we have to hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. So when we get to December 25th, it's empowered for those who hold the beginning of their confidence steadfast unto the end. But, but maybe we could put some other date, you know. I don't know. But that's what we did. Then we had the third angel arrive. It was January 11th to 12th, 2023. So we know when we get there, um, that's a disappointment for, you know, Collins group, at least it should be. But we know we have a new message. Now, the thing is, these lines are each of these chapters. So we know that, that this line of Gideon, this actually goes through, um, there's Jeroboam and Gideon, and it just covers from November 9th to December 25th, 2021. So 
when we look at, so how we understand this then, how we understand these lines, these lines are all related to each other. Um, I don't know if, and what we talked about before was we have chapter six. Is chapter seven just a zoom into one of the way marks on the line of chapter six? And is chapter seven just a zoom into one of the way marks on chapter seven? So uh, chapter eight, I mean, a zoom into one of the way marks on chapter seven. So, so that's what we haven't decided, why we have these three different lines. But we wanted to write them out on a line and see if they make sense. So when I look at chapter eight, to me, it's a zoom into the formalization of the second message, or maybe the second message. Um, but it's going to start with uh, July 19th, right? Or maybe it's a zoom into uh, December 25th. You know, I, I don't know. But that line is going to have December 6th. So this one becomes more detailed, right? If you look at the bottom line, it's going to be addressing after the disappointment. It's going to address December 6th because we're going to see that symbolized there. It's going to have this 126 days beginning October 2nd to February 12th divided in 77 days and 49 days. Right. And then we're going to get to uh, an email that happens on February 16th, 2022. So what that's about. So we know there's an email February 12th, 2022. That's the 391 words. But we also have an email February 16th, 2022. I don't know if we remember what that is. And again, it's just going to bring us to January 11th, 2023. So that's how we address these lines. So to me, they're providing, each line is providing more detail. But when we look at these lines, um, Jeroboam and Gideon, they're both going to have this 777 days covered. And they both have a period of darkness that are similar, but not the same, because they're addressing different messages, are address, addressing different aspects of the darkness. So it ends up being the history of our movement in that period of time. But it's going to lead us to April 5th, 2030 as the fourth angel arriving. So that's uh, what happens with that line. So we're going to look at that tomorrow. Look at that again. So if we look then at this next line, I mean, we just basically take these way marks and put them down at the bottom, right? So we can see they line up. This is going to be the first angel arriving. So that means there's a period of darkness prior to ju Judges 719. And that period of darkness is the fact that we don't recognize that we're going to be disappointed. So we get to July 18, we're, we're disappointed, but we have uh, a call there, right? So we looked at 719 um, as uh, the point where we're going to, to mark the beginning of this line. And that's Judges 7.19, right? So in Judges 7.19, so Gideon and the hundred men that were with him came up onto the outside camp at the beginning of the middle watch. And they had but newly set to watch. And they blew the trumpets and break the picture, pitchers that were in their hands. So it's at this middle watch, just when they had just set up the watch. So that's a good time. Uh, they blew the trumpets, break the pictures that were in their hands. So we're going to say that this is after July 18, 2020. There is this blowing of the trumpets that happens. And that's going to mark this new message. And that's going to be formalized on December 6, 2020. 
So after July 18th, we have July 19th. We have trumpets that are blown. It represents a call. And in that period of time, FFA is going to evaluate July 18th, and they're going to say it was all a delusion, right? And that's going to be Judges 8, verse 1 to 3. So in Judges 8, verse 1 to 3, um, the men of Ephraim said unto him, Why hast thou served us thus, that thou called us not? So we're going to say that this is the men of Ephraim, right? They always come into play here. And in this case, the men of Ephraim are, you know, misrepresenting what's happened. Uh, and part of that, as I would say, um, in my dealings with Bronwyn, is she said, well, you didn't warn us that July 18th wasn't going to happen. Right? She kind of mocks me about it in, in the... Uh, the chat, right? The say chat, you know. And I said it was pretty clear. I I have the email. I sent it to Jeff April twenty sixth. Um, uh, but she just didn't believe me. She didn't look at it. She didn't want to. She just thought I was lying or something. I don't know what she thought. Um, but she just says, "Yeah, you didn't warn us, right?" So this is the the men of Ephraim. So they're going to be questioning this message. They did chide with him sharply. But what we see is that Gideon responds in a, in a good way, right? He says, well, you know, you had uh, chased um, uh, Oreb and Zeb, right? They were delivered into your hands. What was I able to do that compares with that? And so their anger is abated toward him when he had said that. Right, so that's what we're saying is um, December sixth. So it's this this conflict of the, the the men of Ephraim. Now, the men of Ephraim doesn't just ref represent FFA; it represents this movement. So FFA itself is going to publish this, and they're going to reject everything that everything that we taught was a delusion basically but we still have um people continuing on so i don't know you know like we could go over these lines and try to figure them out in more detail maybe there's things that we would see now but that's what we did there when we first looked at this well actually the second time we looked at it <clears throat> And then we dealt with Penuel and Sukkoth, right? So we, this was this, uh, these presentations that were done. Um, uh, I was doing presentations on the book of Hebrews. We have a conflict with the American group over with Mark Johnson and Daniel Fontenot. And we marked that as Judges 8-8, which is October 2nd to 9th. And in Judges 8-8, is going to be uh, when he went up thence to Penuel and spake unto them likewise, the men of Penuel answered him as the men of Succoth had answered him. Now, in this line, we have Succoth first and Penuel second in, in the book, but I actually switch them around here. We're going to put Succoth as December 21st. So that's the, going to be the conflict with the Canadian group. So we put the American group first and the Canadian group. So we don't put them in the order of the verses. So that's Judges 8, verse 4 to 7 is going to be Sukkoth. So we did this, whether it's justifiable or not. But there's 77 days between that, October 2nd and December 25th. Right. And then, of course, we have Odilio's presentation, which also contains uh, the 391 days or not days words 391 words in that email from Colin. and so the 49 days there between them those seven weeks you can see you got 77 days and then seven weeks makes up 126 days <clears throat> yeah 
yeah, as Aran wrote, seven times seven plus 77 is 126. Okay, um, and then we had, so that's going to be, again, the second angel arriving is the December 25th date in this case. And then we have, um, so this February 16th email, we're going to have to address this tomorrow, but... Uh, Um, I don't know where that is. It's going to be February 16th, 2022. Oh, that, that's what that was. That's when the, the, they no longer have my, um, presentations in their, Announcements, F, uh, Three Angels Fellowship doesn't. Right. So we have this 391 words sent to me by Colin on February 12th. And then on February 16th, they send out their email for their weekly fellowship announcements. And I'm not in there for the first time after they had started, including uh, our Zoom link. So, so we need to look at this line a little more carefully. We need to look at all these lines a little more carefully. And any final comments before we close with prayer? Not at this moment. Okay. Well, we do have lots of things to pray about. We got the camp meeting to pray about that we should be praying about. I'm seeking to rent a house that people can stay at during the camp meeting, which we will move into at the end of August. Um, so we're we're going to have that tomorrow. We're going to look at the house uh, that we want, but I guess there's other people looking at the house too. So, so whoever gets it, I guess we we have to trust that God knows what we need. Um, but we need to pray for this movement for each person. You know, the trials that, that we, we personally face that can be very, very trying. And we know that others are facing trials. And there can be various kinds, but we need to be praying for one another. Okay, so uh, let's close with prayer. Your Father in heaven, thank you again for this study. Once again, there's much that we are uncertain about but things that we are certain about and we need to be corrected or established in what is true. We know Lord that uh, this camp meeting coming up is an opportunity uh, for you to work in this movement. And we solicit um, uh, the prayers of each person here in the planning of this. And we pray that we can, Pray for one another. Pray for each person in this movement, for those that have been invited. And um, we ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit can speak to our hearts and to theirs. Um, be with us now throughout this day. And uh, help us to trust in your leading, that you will provide all things for us. We pray this and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.